All right, we are servicing our gator. So we have done an oil change on it. We have changed an air filter. Now we're gonna try and change that spark plug down there. So we need to take the sheet off. So there is these nuts here. There's not one there, but they gotta come off. That way our sheet can slide off. So I can take this cover off and then I can get at it. So it's a process, we're gonna get it done. So I've got all the bolts loose. Those are loose. I had to take two out here, so four out. The seat should just fall off now. I might need two hands for this. I might have to put the camera down, but we will see. There, got it off. I know the quality wasn't that good, but that's the seat, and that's how it comes off. So now I move this. And if I move this, now if I move this, I can get at that spark plug. Don't know how I'm going to do it yet if I work from under there or what, but we will figure that out. Alright, we got an old spark plug out beside a new spark plug. I always put them side by side, I just compare them. Um, they're both the same champion brand, I guess the logo. Oh, nope, this is Briggs & Stratton. Oh, it says champion. Anyway, well, they're both identical. I'm going to pull out the other spark plug, and then I'll put them, both of the new ones in. All right, I got both the old spark plugs out beside the new star spark plugs. <clears throat> so I'm going to put the new ones in. And then we'll be done that and we can start putting the gator back together a little bit. Although I'm probably going to do the fuel filter first. Alright, I got the spark plugs in on both sides. It was a little bit of a battle, but we got it. I'm just going to check the oil. Okay, it's not going to focus, but... It's halfway right in between both lines, so we're going to start it, see if it runs. Okay, because I always like to do that. So. This thing always runs hard when it's cold, so... It's running, that light on the dash, is, it's just telling me to put my seatbelt on, but it runs. So, now we're going to change the fuel filter, and we'll be done. Alright, so here's the fuel filter on the Gator. This is the new one, it's a little bit different. We're going to change it. The gas tank's right there, and it goes through the fuel filter. To me, this looks backwards, but I could be wrong. So I'm just going to put this one on facing that way, I guess. Or sometimes they tell you in here how it should go. But, whatever, we will figure that out again. Alright, I got the fuel filter, or the bag now. There's an arrow on it, <clears throat> so that arrow tells me that this end goes there and it'll go through and the fuel runs that way through the filter here's the old one it's a little bit different but i've been noticing on all our gas engines they've been changing up the fuel filters to these now i don't know all right we got it on it's a little bit of a gap here but it still goes really far down on both sides so the gap on each side is okay we're going to 
start up the gator now and get fuel running through the filter. So, yeah. It's so funky, it's hard trying to start this thing without. Alright, well, filter and everything's done. All the filters are done. I still gotta grease it, but I think I'm ready to put all this stuff back together. So, yeah. Just took it all apart for literally a filter and a spark plug, but it is what it is. So, I have gathered all the tools that I used for this job. Some of them get a little bit dirty and I just like to wipe them all down before I put them back. But, there's a lot of tools everywhere that just need to be cleaned. Alright, we got junk everywhere to clean up now. So, we're going to work at all that because I want an area on this bench again that I can work off of and... Well, we've made the shop floor considerably dirtier, so I'm going to have to pick everything up and sweep it. Alright, we just got to sweep the floor, but we got, like, all this stuff. So that pail's used engine oil, those are just storage containers. We kind of have moved the junk around and we've cleaned off the bench here. So we're doing a little better. Now we're just going to sweep the shop floor. Alright, we got the shop sweeped out. The next thing we're going to work on is we got this package. And it has a part for one of our milky machines. So we're going to go to the barn. This is an inlet. It'll make more sense once you see it. But pretty much we got to take apart a milky machine to put this part on. This is actually the part where... The milk through flows through so it goes through that hole and in there and into the pipeline but i'll show it to you guys and hopefully you'll understand once you saw one of the milkers all right so we're in the milk house now this is our dog indy so machine number four this one it's the one that has the problem i'll see if i can get it out i think you see on the end, there's a little plastic piece there. Just this little plastic thing. That is what broke off. Just kind of sticks out, so it's very possible that it broke off. So, we're going to take that handle apart and put this one on. Alright, so we got this thing apart. The parts may be a little different because the new one doesn't have a notch for that wire. Maybe it's slightly different in how it fits on, but they look a little different. And everything is falling apart. This whole machine is a little bit junky. It's been taped up and it's not ideal, but. All right, at this point, I'm taking a video for my own reference. So I'm just trying to figure out how everything goes together so when I take this one apart I can get it back together on the other one all right I'm gonna do my best here to show you guys how this works my phone's currently just bouncing on a pail so this piece I've already started just kind of slides out and then this piece I'm gonna grab it and I'm just gonna slide in and now it can go back on the milking unit now that it is put together. That's really slick how that works. Awesome. Alright, so while this is apart, I'm going to try and electrical tape this whole wire. This one's got, or this brown one, it's got a little dent in it too, but there's no wire exposed. But I'm going to try electrical taping the blue one. That way it just doesn't touch any metal and doesn't work. So, yeah. Alright, it's obviously not the best tape job, but it should work 
Now I gotta try and fit everything back and put it all back together because they don't really give a lot of room to work with in here so it doesn't really fit too nice but we're gonna give it a shot and hope it all fits in again. Alright well we got it back together couldn't really show too much of it because it takes a lot. Oh, might have to come apart again. It's not working. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna have to go apart again. Anyway, it takes like two hands to get this thing apart and to work on it. It's a big pain. But... So, I was wondering, no matter how many times I plug this machine into this outlet now, it doesn't work. But, if I plug it into the outlet one over, it works. So, this outlet has a wiring problem. I bet you if I wiggle those enough, it'll work. But, anyway, it's the outlet, not the machine. So, there we go. Alright, so, it's after lunch now. Got two fuel filters here. They got to go on a 7420. It's been knocking the odd time, so we think it's got a fuel issue. So we're going to put them on. So, of course, we got our case oil filter rent to look after the John Deere's. All right, here we are. We're going to change these two. Anyway. So, I'm going to take them off. We're going to put the two new ones on. These filters aren't that old. They're I think 600 hours old, so a little bit overdue. But the previous ones we had on for almost 700, 800 hours. So, yeah, we're going to get these off. And then we're going to just see if it'll start. See if we did them right. And it should hopefully stop knocking. All right, two new fuel filters on this tractor. Oop. Now, this tractor is auto priming, so we're gonna turn the key, we're gonna wait 20 seconds, then the filters will have fuel in them. And then we can start the tractor, write down the hours, and keep track for next time. So, we're currently waiting for it to prime. You might be able to hear it. It's making like a little bit of a buzzing noise. That is the tractor priming itself. Now, it's been around 20 seconds, so we're gonna fire it up. Interesting. We might have to loosen that screw, but we will see. Yep, all right, we'll be back. So there's a little screw slot here. Apparently we gotta loosen it. It doesn't say to do this in the book, but our mechanic said that it would probably be required. So, I'm gonna loosen that, and now we're gonna try again. Now you can hear them filling up. You hear them bubbling too. Not sure, there is a bit of a gap here, but maybe that's just the way the filters are. So, we're just going to wait and see them fill up, but yeah, you can hear it. So I just closed that screw, we're going to try this thing again. I know it's sturdy, but it's a mineral hauling tractor at the moment, during the summer it's cleaner.
Didn't really want to start for a second, but it's going now. Come here. Come. Come. You can do it. Come here. Good girl. This is Indy once again. She likes to ride in equipment. Well, the knocking definitely hasn't stopped. Still knocking. So, Canadian Tire Run was made today. We got just a few more odds and ends on sale. Pry bar set and an adjustable rent set. These are going to be awesome to have on the farm.